Welcome to the HerbWorks Podcast featuring Roger Drummer, the formulator at HerbWorks.com. An educator in the field of nutrition and Chinese herbalism, Roger has a unique ability to keep things simple by taking all the guesswork out of complicated health issues. HerbWorks is committed to helping you improve your health and enhance your life through herbs and common sense. Hello, it's Roger Drummer with another HerbWorks podcast. And what are we talking about today? Obesity. Yes, folks, I'm going to be covering obesity, mainly my opinion on it, and what you might be able to do if that is part of your health problem. And believe me, it's part of a lot of people's health problems. About 40 years ago, people in this country started becoming obese. And we can argue about all the different things that went on with that. You know, most of people blame the overconsumption of sugar and how much sugar was dumped into our food supply. But it's a little bit bigger than that. And today, something like 80% of all adults are obese. One third of all our children are, are obese. And wow, a huge portion of them are extremely obese. And what I mean by that is that the people that are really overweight, we're talking 75, 100 pounds. I guess there's more Americans that live with extreme obesity than cancer, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and HIV combined. Think about that. That's huge. Obesity is a major problem. It's part of the whole problem with diabetes and cancer, all these other diseases. And why is that? It's because when you're obese, when you're overweight, you have a tendency to have a very poor diet. You have a tendency to make a lot of inflammatory chemicals. And inflammatory chemicals can be the trigger or the driver to all these other diseases. The inflammation in your brain, the inflammation that drives cancer cell replication, um, the inflammation that damages your body during diabetes, all these different things can be driven just by this excessive amount of weight that you're carrying and the type of fat that you're producing, which produces more of these inflammatory cytokines and other chemicals that destroy your health. So today, what I want to talk about is my idea about obesity, why it's gotten out of control, and probably some of the things that you can do to help get it under control or to change your health. And this is what I want to focus on. I don't want to focus on losing weight because I think that is a really poor way of going about it. I want to focus on getting healthy. Now, you may be wondering what I'm talking about, getting healthy. And weren't we talking about obesity? Yes, we're talking about obesity, but if you simply focus on losing weight, what generally happens is you torture yourself about the food that you're eating, you're torturing yourself by eating less and starving, and you may lose a lot of weight, but it's been proven that 95 to 98% of you will put it all back on when you get tired of it. And the reality is most people... Uh, that lose a large amount of weight have not gotten any healthier because they've never actually changed their eating patterns. They've changed radically the amount they're eating. And maybe they went on one of these packaged diet programs, which I cannot believe anybody would ever do. Uh, But they went on one of these diets that limits their food. And when they get tired of it, Uh, you know, it just comes back. They never did anything to deal with their cravings. They never did anything to, to change their brain function. They never did anything to get healthy. And this is what I want to talk about. And you you might be wondering why I mentioned brain function. What does brain function have to do with obesity? Well, the reality is, is that if you're obese, more than likely you've been consuming a type of diet that does not supply your brain with the nutrients it needs to actually control its own cravings with the types of foods that it probably needs to run at the speed it's supposed to run at, with the types of foods it gets rid of inflammation not only in your brain but all over your body. So basically you've set yourself up to have cravings. 
And these cravings are what d- destroy every diet. Cravings. You just can't take it anymore. You, you just got to eat something, and it's usually something that's sugary and filled with other chemicals because chemicals make you crave chemicals. This is another thing you have to look at. How many chemicals are in my diet? What am I doing to you know, stimulate my own cravings? And this, again, goes back to what? Getting healthy. Getting healthy is more important than losing weight. I'll say that again. Getting healthy is more important than losing weight. But more than likely, if you decide to get healthy, you'll just lose all the weight that you possibly need to lose. Now, since we're talking about obesity, I do want to mention that I have some experience around this. I'm not just talking about all my relatives or friends that are obese. Um, I have personal experience of being obese. When I was 18 years of age, I was, was I extremely obese? I was obese. I weighed 267 pounds. I'm six, slightly under six foot two. And I was not one of those stocky, muscular, big people. I was more one of those (laughs) roly-poly, lots of rolls, fat people. So, I was obese. I was out of shape. I didn't exercise. I was one of those guys, if I pushed the lawnmower around the yard once or twice, I had to stop and have a soda pop. Um, That was me, basically. Um, Bending over to tie my shoes, I could lose my breath. That was tough. But So I decided to go on a diet. In fact, I love telling this story because I think it's funny. But um, when I finally decided to go on a diet... And it wasn't just because I decided to go on one. I decided to go on a diet probably 20, 30 times. But some of my friends started making hibernation jokes. It was December, and you know, it was getting cold outside and snowing, and I was looking pretty hefty and big. In fact, I had quit smoking, I think, around October. And by the middle of November, I had gained another 30 pounds. So I I was already overweight, but that extra 30 pounds brought me up to about 257, something like that, around Christmas time. So I, and there, I was hearing all these hibernation jokes, and so I decided right then and there on New Year's Day, I was going to go on a diet. And for some reason, I actually thought I was going to do it. For some reason, I really set my mind this time that I was going to go on a diet starting New Year's Day. So what did I do? I gained 10 pounds between Christmas and New Year's. You know, I ate every every cookie, every cake, every bowl of ice cream, every dessert I could possibly get a hold of. And so between Christmas and New Year's, I gained 10 more pounds. So I was up at 267. Believe me, I was I was straining in all my clothes. So, but I went on a diet and by the middle of June, I lost 125 pounds. Now, I'll have to say I did not do that through um healthy eating, although I did eat pretty healthy. I ate a lot of salads, you know, ate some animal protein. I, I was eating animal protein then. I did eat eggs, and but I ate a lot of vegetables. I didn't eat much grain. I fasted. Sometimes I did water fast. Um, I did those for 10 days at a time. One time I even did a 14-day water fast. But the reality was, it was back then when I did it, I had absolutely no knowledge of nutrition at all. In fact, I would have to say that when I got done with my diet, when I hit 142, from 267 to 142, I would have to say that I was not healthy. I was very skinny. In fact, um, I, I, but I don't think I was healthy at all. And it wasn't until someone showed me a picture of myself from behind when I was playing volleyball with just my gym shorts on that... It frightened me into gaining some weight because you could see all my ribs from the back, my collar. You know, it was just, it was a nasty looking photo. So I decided to gain weight. It took me a year to put on about another 15 pounds or so. Uh, it was hard putting on weight because I had wasted myself away so much. 
This podcast is brought to you by Herbworks, specializing in stress and brain essentials. Check out Roger's other articles and videos at herbworks.com. While you're there, take a look at our natural herbal-based product line for energy, stress, immunity, and sleep. Now back to Roger. So I was not healthy. The best thing that ever happened to me was probably six or seven years after that, I started learning about health. I started paying attention to the quality of the food that I ate, the quality of the food that I bought, put in my body. I started learning about health. And that's when I started making the journey to becoming healthy. Now, the interesting thing, and this is what I want to focus on today, the interesting thing about all of this is that once I started eating quality food, it became really hard for me to put on weight. In fact, I'm today I weigh, right now today, exactly today, I weigh 170. Now, my weight fluctuates between 167 and 172. And it just depends on my level of activity, you know, what I'm, you know, whether I just, sometimes if I just don't feel like eating dinner, I uh, will lose a couple pounds. If I, I'm, no, I know people are going to hate to hear this, but if I stop working out and exercising, I lose five pounds. I know it sounds like it should be the exact opposite, but I have this slight body type that I have to exercise to get some muscle tone, and I'm going to be one of those people as they get older that if I don't go to the gym, I will just get too thin and frail. So if I quit going to the gym within one week, I lose five pounds. If I go back to the gym within one week, I gain five pounds. <laughs> it's, it's really quite comical. So I enjoy lifting weights a bit. It gives me some tone, but I really don't eat enough. Or I probably don't eat enough bad food to get my weight over 172 at the max. And that takes a lot of eating for me because I do eat a lot. You would think that I, I diet a lot. And I am on a ketogenic diet, just so everybody knows. And there's a lot of controversy about that. It's more of a therapeutic diet than anything else, but it's also very good for losing weight. It's good for certain health conditions. I got into it because I had cancer and I got rid of my cancer. So you know what? I like that diet. And so, but the reality is, is I don't, I'm not as strict in my ketogenic diet as a lot of people are. And I think it's one of the most misunderstood diets out there. And so I eat probably a lot more carb than what most people do on that diet. But almost all of my carbs come from vegetables. And really, I just don't think that vegetable carbs will kick you out of ketosis. It's never done that for me. I'm in ketosis all the time. In fact, I'm almost always, I would say 75% of the time, I'm in strict medical ketosis and I'm eating vegetables all the time. I have quite the bill for vegetables. <laughs> I have drawers in my refrigerator that are always full of vegetables. So the reality is I eat a lot. And so, but I limit other things. And uh, again, I eat healthy food. And you can only eat so much to where you're so stuffed that you can't eat anymore. And uh, basically with healthy food, especially vegetables, you're full. And uh, you get a lot of nutrition without a lot of calories. This is the thing that you, people miss when they talk about diets. You never hear this, but it's all about nutrient-dense food. What does that mean? That means your food, the food that's making up most of your diet when you're trying to diet, should be nutrient-dense. It should have the highest amount of nutrients per calorie. And to do that, you have to be eating a lot of vegetables because there's nothing more nutrient-dense than greens, things like kale, chard, collard greens, broccoli, cauliflower, asparagus, onions, radish, you know, all these all these things, you know, just celery. Celery has an incredible amount of minerals in it, and you can basically burn more calories eating this stuff than you can eat. So, you know, there's just things that you have to do. This really, what I'm talking about right now, is the root 
problem with obesity in this country, and that is the quality of the food. And it's not really the person's fault who is obese or overweight. We have a tendency in this country to to stigmatize you know, obese people to, you know, think poorly of them, to think that they just eat too much. And they probably do eat too much, but it's not because they just decided to sit around and eat all day. For a lot of them, it's because the type of food that they eat has certain things in it that cause them to crave more of the same food. And because they've never been taught or never went through the process of getting healthy, they're kind of caught up in this this system that they're in that they that they're eating food that's not nutritious has very little nutrient dense food in it and it causes more cravings and usually cravings for the same type of food now how is that possible well you've heard me talk before about something called MSG monosodium glutamate it's a flavor enhancer Basically, you could add MSG to cardboard, and it would taste really good. All you'd have to do is kind of arrange the cardboard so it looked better than just, you know, looking at a box. But the reality is, is that it will make anything taste fantastic. The other problem with MSG is that it causes your blood sugar to drop quite quickly, and then you crave things that have more MSG in it. So you're just back eating again and eating again. And... The other danger with MSG, and this is probably the worst part of it. Uh, gosh, did I say the worst part of it? There's probably four. There's there's probably three or four things that are the worst part of it. So I'll mention a couple. Um, one of them is is that once you eat a lot of MSG food, and believe me, most Americans are eating a ton of stuff that has MSG in it. You just don't know it. It's hidden under so many different names. So. Once you eat a lot of food that contains that chemical, it kind of gets into your taste buds. And it kind of coats your taste buds to where only foods with MSG taste really good to you. And so you're caught up in this system of eating MSG food. The other bad part about MSG is that it destroys the neurons in your brain. But we won't get into that exactly today because, you know, that's a different subject. But the reality is, is it does speed up the firing of the neurons in your brain and they fall over from exhaustion and die, which then adds to the inflammation in your brain and brain damage. But today we're talking about how it messes up your taste buds and how it causes you to overeat and it causes you to keep eating foods that aren't that good for you. Because believe me, they don't add MSG to really good food. You know, quality food doesn't need MSG. It has flavor in it. And so one of the things you have to, one of the things, the processes you have to go through when you decide to get healthy, no matter if you're obese or not, you just want to decide to get healthy. You're going to have to realize that you're eating a lot of food with chemicals in it, not just MSG or aspartame, but just things like pesticides, plastics, flavor enhancers, all these different things. And when you go on a clean diet, meaning you're just eating food in its natural state, it doesn't contain any of those things. So it's going to taste really bad to you probably for three weeks. And believe me, though, after about three weeks, one day you're going to wake up and you're going to find out that you have taste buds. And all of a sudden you're going to eat something in its natural state and go, wow, I never tasted that range of flavor in anything. I never tasted... It's like going from two buck chuck to a $70 bottle of Cabernet. You go, wow, that's what wine tastes like. Wow, that's really wine. It has all these flavors, and I can feel the back notes, and there's blackberries, and there's currants in there. And and those people weren't making that story up. There's actually flavor in this. So it's kind of the same way with food. It's just a bump up on everything. And so, But you have to go through that process, and it's just the process that we're talking about of getting healthy, you know, and again, not looking at it as I'm going to go on a diet, look at it as, yeah, I'm going on a diet, but I'm going to just eat as much as I want, but I'm going to get rid of junk. I'm going to get rid of food that has chemicals in it, and I'm going to get rid of food that causes my hormones to go completely off, and I'm going to see what actually happens to my body. Now, the best way to start this is 
is really start with the idea, I'm going to get healthy, right? And we'll see what happens to my weight. Usually it's not hard to lose weight once you start eating healthy because it is an unnatural amount of weight that you're carrying around and your body knows how to normalize itself. It knows how to take care of certain problems if you stop putting the things in it that cause most of your problems and a lot of that is sugar and chemicals. And so to avoid chemicals, the easiest way to avoid chemicals, don't buy packaged food. Eat very little food with more than three or four ingredients in it because then it's starting to get into chemical additives. Don't eat MSG and eat mostly organic food. Now, why do I say organic food? What does that have to do with losing weight and getting healthy? Because if you eat organic food, you're going to cut out the biggest source of toxic chemicals in your diet that could be causing you to have insulin sensitivity, um, causing you to gain weight causing you to crave things, and that's just pesticides and chemicals that are sprayed in your food. Believe me, eating organic is one of the best things you can ever do to just decide to get healthy. And if the extra cost, which isn't that much these days, I don't think organic food as a whole costs you more than 10 to 15% more food, but believe me, because you're getting healthy, you're eating at least 10 to 15 to 20% less food because you're not filling up on junk. Now here, and I honestly believe this, that probably the most important thing that you could do, and this will kind of shock you, is just to stop eating bread and grains for a good month when you decide to get healthy. Now why would you want to do that? Well, the reality is is that if you're obese or overweight, or you just want to get healthy, you're more than likely eating, I would say, easily, 25% of your calories from food that has absolutely zero nutrition in it. And that's usually that white bread that you buy, that white bread they give you at restaurants, that pizza crust, all these different things that you might be eating that have absolutely no nutritional value to them at all. And you're filling up on it. And it's the same type of food that causes you to have cravings because it's really high in carbs and your blood sugar is going to go out the roof. And the only way that you can lower that blood sugar is to have a big insulin response. And basically, what does insulin do? It takes that calorie and it stuffs it into some cells on your body and you become fat. And so you got to limit it. The other thing about it is, is that most of that poor quality food is loaded with gluten. And if you're already overweight, you probably have a lot of inflammation and you're probably producing a lot of inflammatory chemicals. Gluten is just adding to the problem. Believe me, if you can go 30 days without it, it's going to it's going to jump start everything in your system because it's been shown scientific proof that Gluten causes the little junctures in your digestion, the cell wall, to separate and allow more inflammatory chemicals into your bloodstream, which then you can have reactions to that. It ups all the inflammation in your body so that you actually feel worse most of the time. Uh, That added inflammation gives you one more reason why to eat something with sugar just to change the way you feel or just, you know, it's... It's just bad for you. And if the main reason, though, is that you want to get healthy. To get healthy, you have to repair your gut. You have to stop eating food that has absolutely nothing in it, right? Flour is the best place to start. Stop eating bread. Stop eating most grains because if you're overweight, you want your body to start using some of its stored energy. And you can only do that by eating foods that do not raise your blood sugar. And then if you happen to fill up on vegetables one day, your body's just going to start shrinking to supply you with some more energy. And that's how the whole thing kind of starts. You know, it's kind of, even if you wanted to go on a ketogenic diet and say you were really overweight, it's still better to start out with a diet that contains mostly vegetables and not real high fat because you want your body to burn some of its fat it already has, right? So then you kind of work your way into this ketogenic diet. I didn't have any problem with it. I was thin when I started it. I was thin when I'm still on it. I'm I'm just thin. And so um, I don't have a problem with that. 
But the reality is you want to burn some of this stored energy. The best way to do that is have some lean proteins. You know, have some good beneficial fats in your diet, but don't go overboard and eat a lot of vegetables. It's the healthiest food you could ever eat. And it's going to allow your body to start dumping and to start shrinking just to use it as an energy source. But you're going to eat enough that it's not going to make you, you know, cranky or you're not going to be missing out on food. You can eat three times a day. Snack on vegetables. I know it sounds a little tough when you hear it the first time, but the reality is, is that you got to change your taste buds. you got to change your eating habits. And remember, it's all about getting healthy. Now, one of the other things that you need to look at, and this will help you a lot, is your protein intake. Because you remember earlier when I talked about how you got to get your brain right, you got to get your brain set so you're, you're not craving things. You know, you got to make sure your brain's up to speed. You do that by eating certain fats. You do that by eating certain proteins. But you also can get it out of nutritional supplements. There's certain things that you just use to speed up your brain or at least make it run at the speed it's supposed to. Um, to help with your sugar cravings. And that really, the first step of that, besides the beneficial fats, it comes down to protein and protein consumption. You know, your brain, when you wake up in the morning, you think it, it needs coffee and you think it needs, you know, some sugar to wake up. But really what your brain wants is a piece of protein. It wants some protein. Why is that? Because protein is how it makes dopamine. And when it gets dopamine, your brain powers up. It's ready to work the whole day. And that state of energy then um, also does this magical thing to your brain over time. And that is it gets rid of your sugar cravings. Because most sugar cravings are a brain that's lacking protein. Now, here's the other problem with that is that you have to have that protein by itself first thing in the morning or your brain doesn't set its dopamine. You know, you can't eat, you know, most Americans eat or overeat protein, but it doesn't mean they have it for breakfast. They're used to that sugar and coffee, donut, orange juice, you know, serotonin, carbo rush, which basically just sets your brain up for failure for the rest of the day. So you have to have some protein. You know, I've known this for a long time. I even formulated my brain drink, my anti-stress brain drink, Tian Chi, based on the idea of giving you the amino acid that your brain needs in the morning to boot up dopamine. And so there's other nutrients in my formula that are good for that too. But the main thing is that it has this um, thrust of something called tyrosine, which is what your body will take out of a protein food, send it up to your brain, and make dopamine for the day. So I put a little of that in my uh, Tian Chi. So I have the other thing that helps your brain process information, and that's choline. You know, most people aren't getting high-quality choline in their diet, and choline is what helps with the production of acetylcholine, which is the neurotransmitter used to promote the speed of your brain processing information, access to memory. All these things fall under the role of acetylcholine. So when you can boost your brain with a little bit of dopamine in the morning and some acetylcholine, then basically you've primed yourself for a more successful, less food craving day. And that's kind of why I always recommended my drink Tian Chi to be taken first thing in the morning. Because a lot of people are going through these transitions where they've never really taken anything to help heal their brain, to help deal with the deficiencies they have going on in their brain. So basically to bring it up to par, to where they're just thinking clearly, they have good energy, and they're not subject to all the different cravings that go on with diets, especially poor diets, and having toxic chemicals in your diet. So that's one of the first things you need to do. Bring your brain up to par, get rid of chemicals in your diet so that your brain's not being influenced by them and so that you're making wise decisions all the time. So you have to also look at certain other things in your diet, like drinks that have a high amount of sugar, but maybe particularly fructose in them. You know, fructose has been shown to damage your liver function. It's one of the main culprits in 
developing non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, basically where your liver becomes overwhelmed by fat and cannot process um, your food or process toxins that are in your food, basically can't process anything. And your body becomes insulin. Um, it, in other words, it messes up your insulin sensitivity meaning that your cells are no longer responding to insulin and not um, taking sugar out of your bloodstream, which leads to things like diabetes and inflammation in your brain, you know, Alzheimer's, dementia, memory issues. Um, adding things like nuts to your diet. You know, people are, th this one always cracks me up. People are afraid of nuts. Yes, they are, because they contain fat. In fact, a lot of people are just afraid of fat. The reality is nuts have been shown to lower your chances of getting diabetes by about 12%, lowers your mortality rate by about the same amount. And if you're going to be adding nuts to your diet, though, let me tell you a couple of simple things. Always eat raw nuts. Roasted nuts are rancid. You don't want to eat rancid oil any more than you want to cook with rancid oil. Um, Rancid oil causes inflammation, cellular inflammation. It causes a cascade of other health problems. Eat raw nuts. Um, sugar throws off everything in your body. You know, it's just like with fructose. People don't realize it because they don't read labels. You pick up a can of juice and you could be consuming 60 grams of sugar in one can. That's more sugar than I eat probably, I would almost have to say in a year. I don't eat sugar. I have absolutely no cravings for sweet, no cravings for sugar. It's not that I'm special. It's that I balanced out my brain with real food, and I've lost my taste for it. That doesn't mean I won't eat something sweet sometime in the future if it presents itself and I just feel like it, but I really don't think about it. I don't really care. And so sugar throws off your energy throws off your ability to know whether you're actually hungry or not, and it keeps you from feeling full, from satiated. And so sugar throws all these things off. In other words, it messes up your entire system. And right now in this country, 60% of the food that we consume is just sugar. The calories are just from sugar and sweeteners. Think about this. I'm talking, this whole talk really is about getting healthy. If you could just remove the 60% of calories that you're consuming that are all related to sweeteners and sugar and replace that with real food, you'd be on your way to an entirely different body, an entirely different feeling, an entirely different life. If you took that 60%, and just turn it into vegetables and fruit, mostly vegetables. So here's my tips. This is how to get around the whole thing without even dieting. And, as, and like I said earlier, eat as much as you want. You want to eat a natural food diet, mostly organic. You want to eat food in its natural state. Cut down on grains. In fact, if you can for 30 days just get rid of grains, I'm talking about all grains, all flours, all of those types of foods, and just eat vegetables, a little bit of fruit, not much, because you're probably one of those people that's hooked on sugar, and, and a lot of people make this mistake of replacing their sugary drinks with just eating fruit all day, and it's still sugar. Your body has to adjust to that and get rid of it. Don't drink out of plastic bottles all day long. BPA, just like any other toxic chemical in your system throws off your body's insulin sensitivity and messes with weight gain. Um, have protein in the morning. It'll help you deal with cravings. If you want more in-depth information about that, shuffle through the history of my podcast, and I made an entire podcast on sugar cravings. I actually had somebody listen to one of my tapes and get off of all their medication for diabetes, and they lost 30 pounds in a month. And all I did was tell them how to eat protein for breakfast and vegetables and get rid of their sugar cravings. And so it's, it's all possible, folks. Again, eat as much as you want. Do something to help you get healthier. Add a little exercise to your life. 
um, supplement. Almost everybody in the world is nutrient deficient in probably the five or six major categories of nutrition. Do something for your brain. Take a product like tea on chi. Believe me, I've had numerous people use that drink as a diet aid, and it's not for dieting. The only reason it works for that is because it makes you feel better. When you're less stressed and you feel better and your brain's actually working, it's easy to make wise decisions about the food and the drinks that you're putting in your body. This is one of the things that is overlooked in drug addiction. It's overlooked in dieting. It's overlooked in cravings. It's basically overlooked. Is that if you don't feel good, you're going to find something to change the way you feel. What are the major things that you always will fall back on to change the way you feel? Sugar, drugs, alcohol, smoking, right? You can work on all four of those things just by feeling better, doing something to balance out your brain and to deal with your stress. And basically, that's what I specialize in. And so that wraps it up, my little talk on obesity and changing your diet. And just remember, it all starts with getting healthy. This is Roger Drummer signing off on another HerbWorks podcast.